Did you write down many goals? Sometimes people feel greedy when they start to ask for what they want. They feel as if they're taking from others. The best way around it, your limiting beliefs, is to be sure that you also want is to have a success too. In other words, if you want a new house but don't want your neighbor to have one, you're stuck on ego, and that's greed. But if you want a new house and think everyone else ought to have one too, then you're tuned with the creativity spirit, and you'll be pulled and led to the new house. You'll attract it. You'll see that there isn't any shortage in the world. Your universe is bigger and bigger on egos. You can supply more and more on demand. Our job is simply to be honest about what we want without wanting to harm or control another person. Never ask for a person or a specific person to do something. Allow the universe the power of everything else to arrange the right person, place, and time. Your job is to state your intention. Your desire is to coming is to be coming in from your inner spirit and the space provided. Honor your inner spirit by writing down what you really want to have, do, or be. Now, now what you would be better than selected. Now, what would be better than what you selected? In other words, you may have written down, I want $50,000 in the bank by the holiday. Well, what would be better than that? Wouldn't you prefer $100,000? The idea is to stretch your goal and yourself a little bit now, being honest with yourself about your desires. Write down what you would want even better than what you have already stated that you want. Now, write down one goal or an intention, something about what would really, something you'd really like to have, do or be. Focus brings power. Look on your list and see what your goal that jumps you onto you. With your goal and intentions and most energy and charge on it, your goal is to scare a little bit of excitement onto you. And to keep in mind that you've always declined your goals. There's nothing wrong with stating something like, I want to weigh 120 pounds, I want a brand new Corvette, have $50,000 in the bank by Christmas. In the space below, write down your most powerful intentions that you can. Here's the next step. Write your intentions as if you already have it. In other words, I want to weigh 120 pounds, own a brand new Corvette, and I have $50,000 in the bank by coming of Christmas. Becomes now a weigh of 120 pounds, own a brand new Corvette, and I have $50,000 in the bank. If you want an alternative and make you feel better, consider the approach Dr. Robert Anthony advises in his audio program, Beyond Positive Thinking. He says that, be more powerful to write, I now choose to weigh 120 pounds, I own a brand new Corvette, and I have $50,000 in the bank. Do that now. Just rewrite your goal and present the tense of pretending that you already have what you want and using the word choose if you so desire. Before you go on, add one more list to your request. Add the phrase, this or something better. This is something better. The people's loophole allows them to get rid of and get out of their ego and insists on getting whatever your desires are. You are coming up to pure ego. You'll see in the step five, letting the important element is success. The real secret to getting whatever you want is to want without need. This will become a clear this will become more clear later. For now, add the freeing line. This or something better. This or something better to your stated goal. And do that here. Now, before you complete the process, let's be sure that this goal or intention is right for you. There's a way to test your intention. I'll explain this procedure next. You'll love this one. Let your body speak its mind. Most people who do muscle testings do it wrong. I explain what it is and teach you the right way to do it. Muscle testing or behavior kinesiology kinsen, is a way to ask your body questions. In short, your body goes weak from something that you ask, something isn't good for you, your body stays strong, if something isn't right for you, if something is right for you, you may have something done before, usually one person stands arms stretched out on the other side and the other person stands in front of them, testing the person puts out his hand and the other shoulder and the other hand is outstretched on the arm. While the other person's arm stretched out thinks of something, the other person pushes down on the arm and the person goes down, the subject was thinking of something was weakening them. If the arm was stay strong, the person was thinking of something that was positive for them. That's a simplistic explanation of involved process, but you get the idea. People like Dr. David Hawkins has written numerous popular books such as The Power Versus Force about the work of testing long lists of everything, everything from peoples to theories to time periods and history, all of the fascinating readings. It has caused movements from which best-selling authors such as Wayne Dyer tout about the benefits of the muscle test. But again, most testing is often done wrong. People can smile and throw off a test. The test produces the holdings of them. And when they hold them over their solar plexus to get an accurate answer, they push too hard or with their whole hand in any number of the things and you do muscle testings right. You can find out your goals and what's right for you. If you don't, you'll deceive yourself and pursue a path that's not right for you. So, how do you do a muscle testing right? The right way to test. First, both people have to be clear. That is, both are involved in the center calm to be open. You have to see what's right in the potential trouble spot. Few people are centered calm and clear. Anyone testing you better be and they auto, they will unconsciously influence the test and the way to get a clear and easy test is you could drink a large glass of water you could tap your chest over the thumbs upper heart area a few times you could tap the underside of your left hand the karate chop area you could say I deeply love accept and forgive myself all these methods clear 
All these methods clear you so that you'll be able to get the accurate answers. Both people involved in the muscle test need to do so and do this. Second, you need to do a control test. In other words, you are being tested. The person about to press down of the arm needs to ask you a neutral question. Something like, my name is Joe. Is your name Joe? In a valid test, obviously, you should test strong. If you don't, you go back to do something clearly. Third, the person doing the pressing down needs to use only two fingers. The gently but firmly give one quick push down. This is not a test of strength. It's not a contest. The solo testing method. There's also a way to test yourself by yourself. And I wrote about this method on my ebook, Hypnotic Marketing. Here's how you do it. The best one person testing method I've discovered works like this. Hold your own left hand with your fingers spread apart on if you were going to hold a softball or a large grapefruit. Now, take a thumb and index finger of your right hand and touch the thumb and pinky of your left hand. Are you with me? You should have your left and wide open and your right thumb on your left thumb and your right index finger on your left pinky. Got it? Now, all you have to do is squeeze the left thumb and left pinky together as if you try to resist. Now, go ahead and do that now. You should have found that it's easy to resist. Now you think of something negative. Hitler works every time. You try to resist as if you try to squeeze. Your, numbers, your thumb and pinky should have weakened. Now think of something loving, favorite you should work and you resist of your own squeezing. Your thumb and pinky should remain strong and apart. See how this works? I know all that must have seemed wild to you, but hey, no one is looking and I won't tell. So let's keep it going. Now test your goals. Now, <clears throat> you have the basics for doing a muscle test. And what you will do next in your written goal, it should make you strong. If it doesn't, consider rewriting or in testing again. If you, want to, if you want it to be right with you, a muscle test is the one way to find out is this, if this is a match for you. If it is, it will be easier to attract. Now write your goal here and then muscle test it. If you need to rewrite your goal, do so here. Carry your intention. You might want to write down the above goal, the above goal in a card and put it in your pocket or purse or do so. It's unconsciously reminding yourself of the intentions. Your mind will help you nudge into the direction of making your goal a reality. So relax. You just planted a seed in your mind. The rest of this book will tell you how to water it, give it sunshine, and clear out the weeds and let it grow. Prepare to attract your miracles. Prosperity is the ability to do what you want to do at that instant you want to do it. Prosperity is the ability to do what you want to do at that instant you want to do it. Raymond Charles Barker, Treat Yourself to Life, 1954. Step 3. The Missing Secret. I was on a teleseminar with a marketing friend of mine. We were telling our listeners how important it was to watch out for self-sabotage in our lives and in their lives. We were pretty impressed with ourselves as we told them that their unconscious beliefs would create their reality. That if they didn't get it clear, then they could manifest failure. Halfway through the call, we introduced our surprise guest for the evening. He was a famous self-help guru from another country. The guru came on and began to dismissing what my partner and I had just covered. The guru came on and began by dismissing what my partner and I had just covered. Can I take this to a new level, he asked. Well, of course, we told him. You're the guru. You don't need to unearth your past or change your unconscious, he began. All you have to do is focus on what you want and stay focused on it in each moment. I totally agreed with him, but also wondered how he expected people to stay in the moment, the greatest spiritual challenge of all time, but I kept quiet and let our guest tout his beliefs. I used to be a therapist and quickly saw that it was a waste of time to go into someone's past, looking for the cause of whatever that they were getting at. And he explained, all you have to do is pay attention to your feelings. If it feels good, go in that direction. If it doesn't feel good, stop. I agreed that with all of what I want to do, our girl guests were saying this, but if I had to wonder if he was only seeing a part of the big picture, I began to feel that he was making the same mistake every other goal-setting, self-help, self-improvement, new-age guru type was making, so I had to ask a few questions. What if a person sets a goal, watches their feelings in each moment, and still doesn't get the results that they wanted? Then they have a conflict with their subconscious mind, he answered. They need to back off from their goal and go for something more believable. Then we're back to the needing the unearthed beliefs and get get clear I said well you don't really need to do that just know that you're in just know your intention follow your feelings and adjust in each moment a girlfriend missed the point and from what I can see so have virtually all the current spokesmen spokespeople on how to manifest whatever you want what is the point let me explain the story and I'll explain it with a story watch spot spot was a stray dog I claimed as my own pet when I was in college but he used to run off and tear up the neighbor's garden, run across the street and make drivers slam on their brakes and just make a nuisance, a nuisance of himself. So, I put on a small leash, and when I felt guilty from wondering a friend of mine from a three-foot leash, I bought a longer leash, six feet of freedom, and put it on Spot, and then I walked six feet away and called Spot to me. He ran for three feet. He wouldn't go an inch beyond the length of the old leash, 
and I had to walk over to Spot, put my arm around him, and walk him out the full six feet of the new leash. From then on, he used all of that leash. I think each of us had our limits from which we placed of our freedom. We need the miracles coach. A miracles coach is to help see us in a reality from which we have no limits. Jonathan Jacobs does that with his clients. But he does it in a way from which you may seem pretty strange to you. Hang out onto your seat. and Hang onto your seat and let me explain. see if I could explain it to you. Touching the sky. The first time I had a session with Jonathan, I didn't know much to expect. I thought the man was a little strange because he couldn't articulate what he did. Because, I, because he couldn't articulate what he did. But... I had been curious as a journalist for many years, so I jumped in and did a session with him. What's your intention for this session? Jonathan asked. Well, what do you mean? You can have anything you want. What do you want to focus on? I thought it over for a moment and then spoke. I want clarity on the book that I'm writing about Bruce Barton. What kind of clarity? I want to know what I'm supposed to do next, I said. Okay, well, let's go upstairs. Jonathan had me lie down in his massage table and he gently guided me to the breath to breathe in different colors. Breathe in the color red into the top of my head and imagine it going through my body and out onto my feet. And we went through the numerous colors. What other color do you need to breathe in, he asked. I said, gray. He then asked me to breathe in the color. And after several minutes of breathing in deeply and relaxing my massage table, Jonathan put his hand over my heart and said, open this up. While I didn't consciously do anything, I felt a rush of electricity and energy shoot through me, almost blinding me. There was a strong white light surging through my body, blasting into my head, somehow illuminating the inside of my skull. Suddenly, I felt the presence of angels, spirits, guides. I don't know how to explain it, but it was real. I felt it, a sense it, and I knew that they were there. And these beings somehow worked on me, altering my beliefs, helping me realize that I had more leash than I thought. I'm not see how. I'm not sure. How long? I was in the altered state. Twenty minutes or an hour? I don't know. When I finally sat up on the table, I noticed that Jonathan had a tear rolling down his cheek. When the energy started to blast through me, he moved aside to let it do, to let it do, it, to let it do its work. But the beauty and the miracle of what was, he was seeing touched him. He was crying. As my head cleared and I got my bearings, I realized the, new, the next step for my book project was to go to Wisconsin to continue. To continue my research for looking for a private papers of Bruce Barn and Historical Museum, I had gotten my attention, and that's not all. Shortly after the first session with Jonathan, I began to notice other changes in my outer life. The book I had been working on, had been working on, began to take a direction, that, and became the seven lost secrets of success. I found a publisher for it. I found the money for completing my research, and I bought a new car. I bought a new house. My income soared. How? Why? I've invited the other side of help. I invited the other side to help me, and it did. The wise choice. As I write these words, I'm very aware that you may think I've lost my mind. After all, here I am, an adult, an author, fairly well-known speaker, marketing specialist who's advertising business executives about their work, talking about spirits. But I also know that you know what I mean. Even the most uh, atheist amongst has been touched by some miraculous, uncanny, or unexplainable. Although no one has ever awaits the other side of life, we all tend to believe something intelligent is there. Maybe it's worth mentioning in this book that helped me from much I was... What, man, what Can a Man Believe by Bruce Barton, and he explained from which little proof for heaven and earth after earth, from which he explained that there was little proof of heaven after earth, but this was far wiser to believe than not to believe. In other words, while I can't prove the angels and guides are standing and ready to help you, it isn't much more delicious and comforting as a magic, magical thought to believe than to not believe in them. It's, not, it's much more delicious and comforting and magical thought to believe in them than to not believe in them, and there's no concrete evidence to support them or deny them. But when you can use the belief in them to create miracles, wouldn't you be wise to do so? That's a mysterious something. That mysterious something. Yesterday, a friend of mine called and said that she wanted and believed in the guides and angels and teachers from the spiritual side of life, but a part of her doubted they existed. So that's okay, I said. I have my doubts too. You do? Sure, I said. If you have to go into the court and law and prove that you had spirit guides, they would laugh me out of the courthouse. There's no proof of them. But also, there's no proof against them. And then I remembered something that I read in recent issues of Reader's Digest, where Larry Dossie talks about this prayer and his prayer. And he says, praying healthily recovered, helped him recover from an illness. In many cases, they recovered from the doctors from what they say was incurable diseases, from what successful patients was in pray. The patients admitted that they didn't know if the prayers were answered. But it was the belief in the praying and the act of praying that helped them anyway. Again, Barton pointed out, it is wiser to believe than not to believe. Believing helps create miracles. And Barton wrote in the following passages of 1927, What can I, what can a man believe? I've always loved it, as it seemed to stir the very something he talks about within me.